Times and seasons are so very important. Last night in New York, it was kind of bittersweet as I turned uh, the New York church over to our new senior pastor. And it was a great joy to do that, but it was also a confirmation for me. I was tired going up and exhausted going back. And I'm like, they ain't the anointing, ain't there no more for this. And so uh, we are excited for our New York church. We combined two churches together there and they're gonna do a great job. And Taff and I are very proud of what they will accomplish. After 40 years in ministry, sometimes you got to know when to step aside and let the next generation come on up and do what needs to be done. Amen? Okay, so this is going to be so seriously amazing. And I'm excited about teaching this to you. And I want you to, in a sense, um, we're going to kind of go to school a little bit, but this is going to really the series, the entire series is gonna, gonna give you some information on, on how to rise above the situations of this natural world. Uh, when things are not working, how many of you have experienced things in your life where you did all you knew to do, but it, it just didn't work? And uh, I remember my daddy saying one time, I, I said, Dad, I did, all I, I did all I knew to do. He said, well, you don't know enough. <laughs> Amen? And, and I don't want that to be the case with us. There's a very weird time going on. Things are probably not going to go back to exactly the way they were. Uh, so for the believer, for you and I, what does it mean? What does it mean when you're facing impossibilities? What does it mean when you know there's no way for this situation to work out the in the natural world, I mean, where do you go? What, what happens when the hope you're told to have just ends up in hopelessness? There's a lot of that going around. And yet this is, I believe, the time for us to shine like never before. So in doing so, uh, you know, the Lord's challenged me and I've challenged myself to enter into a uh, a series where I, I'm believing God to be precise and uh, to show you how to do this. And so I call this series Living in the Supernatural. Living in the Supernatural, not expecting the supernatural to show up every now and then. I want to show you how to never be bound by hopelessness. That there's nothing in this world that you will confront that there's not a way out of it, over it, or through it. You hear what I said? There's always going to be a way out of it for those of you who live in the supernatural. There's always going to be a way out of it. Now, I want to show you this illustration. If you'll go with me to the book of Romans, chapter 4. Uh, guys in the uh, control room, I didn't give y'all scriptures because... I know where I'm going, but I don't know exactly how I'm going to get there, so just, just go with me. It, it, one of those sermons. I, I, I know the destination, but uh, I don't have my little guide, guiding system on my phone telling me which way to turn, so I'm depending on the Lord for that. Amen? Uh, Romans chapter 4, this is a very good illustration here. Verse 17. As it is written, I have made thee, we're talking about Abraham, a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God who quickeneth the dead, and even God, even God calleth those things which be not as though they were. Underline that. God calls things that be not as if they were. Can you think of some things in your life that be not? that you would like for it to be, but it's not? Well, you got a little clue here. God called the thing that was not as though it were. So if you were sick and, and you're not healed, then don't call what be, call what be not. So you're not supposed to be saying I'm sick. Well, you already got that. What you're supposed to be saying is I'm healed. God called the things that be not 
as though they were. All right? So it goes on here, verse 18. Abraham, who against hope, believed in hope. Now, this is a very interesting thing. Against hope, believed in hope. Sounds to me like there are two realms here. There's the hope that you have in this earth realm, in this physical realm, and then there's the hope that you have from somewhere else. And I'll submit to you to be the hope that you get from God's Word. It's the hope that comes from, from another realm, a, a supernatural realm. And Abraham hoped against that hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. So God spoke a word to Abraham. And obviously what God said, there was no hope for that to happen in the natural. And you'll see in a moment what he said. There was no hope for it to take place in the natural. So Abraham says, I am going to go against that natural hope with the hope that comes from what he said. The hope that comes from what he said. Now this is the importance of getting in the Word of God as a Christian. Getting in the Word of God as a Christian provides hope that you can use against the hope that's in this world. But if you don't get your hope from God's Word, you will be subject to the hope that's in this world. So when systems in the world fall, and that was your only hope, when the government doesn't do something, that's your only hope, or somebody else, that's your only hope, you're going to be, you know, uh, you're going to be stuck. I don't want to be stuck. I want to get my hope from what I find in the Word. If the Word has a promise for me, that's where I get my hope. And there are lots of people that don't know that, lots of Christians that don't understand that. And that's the reason why a lot of them don't get in the Word anymore, because they don't see, the, see any need to get in the Word. But the need you have to get in the Word is that's where you get your hope from. That a Christian that's in the Word should never be hopeless. Amen. Glory be to God. I, I got to seriously cool down, because I told you I got to shout at me somewhere. Right. Not enough to be running around the dome. I don't know, if Brother Chris, we do that anymore, running around no dome. But that's why we get in the Word. That's why you get in the Word. Read the Word because that's where you harvest your hope. Glory to God. There's never, you never can tell when you're going to bump in something, some hope in the world, and then it lets you down. Something you were dependent on, and it lets you down. Someone you depended on, and you let you down. A job you were dependent on, and it lets you down. A relationship you depended on, and it lets you down. But when you get your hope from the Word, anytime you confront that, you have hope that you can use against that hope and still rise above that situation. If you understand what I'm saying, say amen. You, you'll rise above that situation. Now, you got to understand, I, I want to teach you. In other words, here's what I expect as a result of this series. Supernatural operation. You are no longer, say this out loud, I will no longer be bound by the hope that's in this world. My hope comes from God's Word. Amen. And so Abraham's in this situation here, and he says, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body, now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, and neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. So <laughs> his body's dead, Sarah's womb is dead, and the Bible says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. Now, there's always going to be the temptation to walk in unbelief, and it's never going to be that something's wrong with your faith. The problem's going to always be the presence of unbelief, and you got to make sure that the presence, is not, the presence of unbelief is not there in the form of fear, in the form of worry, in the form of care. How do I know if unbelief is in my life? When you're in worry, when you are in fear, when you are in care, you are in unbelief. What do I do to get rid of that? Because, see, the devil's going to bring a thought, a contrary thought, to try to bring the presence of unbelief. And a lot of times, things don't work because of the presence of unbelief. You are born-again Christians. It is now time for us to quit living this casual life as a Christian. Oh, I'm a Christian. I have a Christian T-shirt. We go to church. Oh, hallelujah. It's time for us to rule and reign, bless God. It's time for us 
People will get saved when they see the supernatural operating through your life. So welcome to World Changes Supernatural Church. <laughs> Glory be to God. He didn't consider his body. So what is it that you consider when you read the word? When the Bible gives you a promise, do you always find yourself going back to the, your situation and considering what's happening there? God says, I'm not considering that. He says, I'm not considering your education. I'm not considering your color. I'm not considering your past. I'm not considering anything. I gave you a word, and you're going to have to decide whether you're going to have to have hope in that, and you're going to believe in that, or you're going you're to spoil my promise that I gave you by considering your problem. Do you hear what I just said? You're going to spoil your, the promise of God by considering your problem. Don't consider your problem. Consider the, you, know, you know what it means when you consider something? That means you're rolling it over and over and over in your head again. You're considering, you know, the, the Bible says, I'm going to prosper you in every way. And you're going you're gonna to sit up there, well, I got to consider I don't make but $4 an hour. He didn't ask you to consider that. He didn't ask you to consider that. He's trying to show you I'm God. You don't, even, you don't know who you're talking to. I promise you this, and you're considering that. Law, calm down, boy. Got to teach this thing. Calm down. I feel chill bump. I know you don't move by chill bump, but I. Thank you. <laughs> you. You don't consider all the stuff that's going on around you. You don't consider the economy. You don't consider what they got on ABC News or Good Morning America. You don't consider none of that. You got a promise. I hope y'all ready. Your life going to change. You ain't going to be the same. You are coming out of average, you understand? You are not going to be no average world changers. The world changers nation is about to switch realms. We are not just going to be in this physical realm, but we're going to abide in a higher realm. I'm ready. I'm ready. It's time for you to cast out devils. It's time for you to lay hands on the sick. It's time for you to raise the dead. It's time for you to call things that be not as though they were. It's time for you to receive the wealth of the wicked. It's time for you to be the head and not the tail. It's time for you to be above and never again beneath. We are living in the supernatural. I can't wait to everybody get in the house before I teach this. I got to teach it now. Abraham didn't consider his own body, now dead, the body dead, and, and then Sarah's womb is dead. And they're supposed to be having a kid. How you going to do that? His body dead, her womb dead. And if they were to go to the doctor, the doctor say, this ain't happening. But the Lord said, oh my God. See, we, we, don't, we don't do that much more. We sit there and take what the doctor tell you and not consider what God told you. Hey, you should have thought about this about 50 years ago, bro. But it ain't gonna happen now. Sarah, it, it, it ain't gonna happen. It, it, it's dead, it's gone. But God said. There ain't no way in the world you're gonna be able to get this job. You gotta have your, this degree, you gotta have that degree. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I, I know all that, but God said. Well, you know, uh, you know, I, you know, 20 years ago it would have been a good time to start this business, but it, it won't work right now. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but there's only one problem with that. What God said. My God, I'm believing God that the world changes nation is gonna go back to what God said instead of what somebody else said. Now, I, I hope you're ready for this now because people are going to be looking at you strange now because you're going against what they can see. You're going against what they understand. And you're now saying, I'm getting ready to rise above all of that. I'm not just going to be no average Christian no more. I am ready to rule and reign and to stand on what God has spoken to me to do. I don't know about you, but I'm not ready to curl up and just submit to what the world say. No, you ain't seen nothing yet, boy. The best is yet to come.
You ain't seen, you hadn't seen God's best. Some of you ain't seen God. You're a Christian, but you, you ain't seen nothing. You hadn't seen nothing. You hadn't experienced nothing. Yeah, you saved, but you, you have no record of a supernatural happening in your life. And I don't think you ought to be a Christian and die and not experience God's supernatural happenings in your life. So I'm going to teach you so you can take hold and see some supernatural happenings in your life. In other words, God's going to do something in your life that's not supposed to happen in this natural realm. I speak it and declare it in the name of Jesus. I can't rush through this series because some of this stuff you got to catch. Some of y'all going to be notes, right, taking notes. Some of you, you're going to have to put your pen down and just say, all right, well, what you talk, talk to me, Lord. You can pick it up a little later on, but the, the Lord said, now nah, I want to say something to you. I'll be saying stuff in this series, and you're going to be hearing the Holy Ghost while I'm saying something. I'll be saying one thing, and the Holy Ghost will start talking to you with precision telling you what to do, when to do it, how to do it, why he wants you to do it. I'm ready. I've seen some stuff, and I want to see some more. Well, I'm not moved by what, what, what I see. See, you, you don't even know what they're talking about. That ain't, that ain't, ain't, no, 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 no. No, I'm not moved by the crazy stuff or the natural things of what I see. I'm moved by the Word of God. Every Every miracle that I read in the Bible came as a result of a word from God. The church in these last days, we are stuck with the word of God, which is good. You got to start there because the word of God is going to create intimacy between you and God. The word of God is going to be the walkway or the pathway that leads you to a rhema word. There's a written word, that's what you see in your Bible, but then there's a rhema word. There's a word from God. And one of the reasons we hadn't seen breakthrough in our lives is because we keep living by the word of God, but we won't let the word of God take us into the bedroom where we can get an intimate word from God. So you can get a word of God that says you will be successful. But when you go in the bedroom, the Lord will say to you, I need you to start this on this street at this time with this thing. And read the Bible. You see people who have breakthroughs because they, they tell you what the Lord told them to do. A word from God is the key to breakthrough in your life. So that means we're calling for not you just to get in the word of God, but to get in the word of God long enough until it leads you into intimate places where you can get a word from God. So that means you can't be uh, this casual Christian that have no relationship with God. You're going to have to really be a real Christian, a real one, someone who knows your God. And when you know your God, you're going to hear from your God, and your God going to give you some instructions. And when you start doing the thing you heard from God, and you, you, you do it, and you see breakthrough, you ain't going to be able to talk, talk to people about, you know, what you did to make this happen. You're going to become a witness to the glory of the Lord, and you're going to have to say, the Lord told me to do this. I did it, and look at what the Lord has done. I, are y'all ready for this? Some of y'all, some of y'all just satisfied being a little, little carnal Christian, you know, moved by what you see, read a little scripture, medit, you know, meditate on it for two minutes so you can quote it and then quote it to somebody. Oh, praise the Lord. You're a good little Christian. No, no, I'm talking about somebody that's going to wreck hell up. They're going to wreck it up. That's going to wreck hell up. When demons see you, they're going to go the other way. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There'll be other demons waiting outside your door. Warning demons that's trying to come in say, don't go in there. Don't go in there. I've been in there. I, I just came out. I ran out of there. Man, they'll shout a, a thousand hallelujahs. They'll mess you up. They know their God. We better go to some, some fake Christian that don't know their God because those are supernatural people on the inside of there. Y'all ain't ready for me, man. Y'all, y'all. Don't you understand what I'm, do you see the crazy stuff going on in the world right now? They need to see some infallible proof. I don't need to hear no more word. Everybody running their mouth. Everybody got something to say. Everybody got an opinion. 
show me what you say you believe. Amen? So he didn't stagger at, the, not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith. And, and this is the part that got me. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Another translation says, he so depended on God that he started thanking him. He was so dependent on God that he started thanking him. Are you thanking God for the thing that hadn't showed up yet? I, I so depend on him, I start thanking him. Hadn't felt no different. Ain't nothing different showed up. In the world, it looks hopeless. And here I am saying, I depend on you, Lord. Thank you. I depend on you, Lord. Thank God's not going to be showing you stuff and telling you to do stuff so you can rely on your own abilities. He gets no glory out of you relying on your own performance and relying on your own ability. He gets no glory out of that. But when you start thanking God because you depend on God, do you know the only reason God gave us grace, and I'll teach this later, he gave us grace so we can totally depend on him. Yes. We keep depending on ourselves. We keep depending on the government. We keep depending on, see, you know, <sighs> let me see. <sighs> some, some people were so dependent on the money that came from the government, like it was going to keep coming. And, 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 and God was like, why are you depending on the government? I've been taking care of you all this time. He said, won't you try me? Try me. Try me. Well, you know, government gave me that loan. Yeah, you got to pay the government back too. <laughs> try me. Somebody called me one time and said, I got some information so that the church can get the, get the loan and stuff they need so they can make it through the pandemic. I said, I'll die first. <laughs> Government's not my source. The PPAE whatever loan, well, that ain't my source. Well, Doc, that's easy for you to say. No, 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 it'll be easy for you to say the day you decide to hope against hope and believe God for your provision and believe God that the supernatural will show up in your life and believe that God can take care of you. Right. And oh boy, he has, he is, and he will. Somewhere in your life, you're going to have to make your mind up. I'm going to depend on God. See, if you don't start depending on God now, when you really need him, you'll have no practice depending on him. You got to start practice depending on him. You're so quick to run, run to the provisions that the world has provided. And yeah, I know there are certain provisions that God has allowed to be in the earth for you to take uh, advantage of. Yes, but... You see, you use that as an excuse. That's a real soft excuse to just keep saying, don't depend on God. That's easy. Yeah, there are lots of things that are provided in this world that Taff and I can take advantage of, but we're never going to be disciplined and in shape depending on God. Certain stuff you can depend on God with. I mean, a headache ain't going to kill you, so sometime before you go running and get a, a Tylenol, give God an opportunity. Start somewhere. Start somewhere trusting God. Lord, I, don't, I ain't got enough money to get no light bread. I got some beans, but I ain't got no money. Let's start somewhere. Don't come calling me. Hey, yeah, 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 uh, bro. And then let me borrow the money to get a light bread. Jesus is your light bread supplier. When are you going to trust him for something? You got to start somewhere. We got to quit playing church. We know how to do church, but we don't know how to do life. And now doing church ain't working no more. You can come and shout, scream, roll up and down the aisle, spit, 
and dance and nothing happens because you know how to do church. But do you know how to take the promises of God, take the scriptures of God, go home with it, go to sleep with it, take a shower with it, eat breakfast with it, call those things that be not as though they were. Look at those bad situations in the face and say, I still will believe God. When are you going to do that? Remember the old Baptist church that you sang song, Try Jesus, he's all right. I think they said, I done tried him, and he's all right. He's a doctor in a sick room. He's all right. Y'all know nothing about that. He's a lawyer in the court. Oh, he's all right. See, the problem is, is you won't try him. You won't even give him a shot. When will you allow him? the opportunity to meet your needs, to be your God, and to show up and show out in your life. When? Do you just wait until a bad day comes? Don't wait till a bad day comes. Start depending on him every day for something. Amen. You wake up in the morning, I don't feel God. I don't feel good. God, I depend on you for joy today. Start, start small. Lord, I, I depend on you for insight today. Lord, I depend on you to walk in a greater level of love today. Lord, I depend on you to give me wisdom to do a good job today. Lord, I depend on you for insight and revelation. Start depending on him. Start with something depending on him. If you're a doctor in the hospital, Lord, I depend on you for the wisdom. Use my hands and, and think through me and show me how to handle this and let me see what can't be seen. That's how this works. It is not enough for us to put a t-shirt on. I'm a Christian. Praise the Lord. I ain't trying to do that no more. I want to not walk with Jesus, but I want you to see Jesus walking in me. Supernatural. 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 I'm strong in faith, and I'm going to give glory to God before anything happens. Abraham, by body was dead. He gave glory to God. Sarah Woon was dead. She gave glory to God. She gave glory to God. Somebody said, my, my womb's not dead, my body's not dead, but my, my finances, they dead. Give glory to God. My relationships are dead. Give glory to God. See, you're going to find out if you really want Jesus the way you say. I mean, how, how, how does that work, you know? I'm a Christian, and I don't, I don't want to ever get in his word. Uh, you, know, I, I, you know, I love Pastor Don and everything, but I, I got to go somewhere where I can shout a little bit and learn nothing. You're as ignorant today as you were 20 years ago, sitting under a bunch of emotional shouting and don't know nothing. The devil come knock on your door, you didn't even know it was the devil. You thought it was your next door neighbor. <laughs> Are you listening to me? He said, and, boy, and being fully persuaded, that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. That's a huge phrase, being fully persuaded. How do I get there? Being fully persuaded. Well, Abraham told us how to get there, considering. Spend time considering it. Spend, spend time thinking about it. And then eventually start speaking it. What is he talking about? Meditating in that word. Becoming fully persuaded to a point where you just, you, just, you just trust God. You believe God. Being fully persuaded. You know, when I was in that doctor's office and after they did that biopsy on me and they said, yeah, you do have cancer and it is aggressive. We got to get on it right now. Man, my heart starts beating fast. I'm like, what you mean aggressive? He said, it's moving now. I'm like, what? 
I had to go set, I had, had to that's just back up. You, you, you on me right now. It was like the devil talking to me. Stop this. I don't want to talk to you no more. In fact, I never did see him another day in my life. I said, I never want to talk to that man no more. I paused. I got out of the situation. And I started thinking. And I never forget this thought that came. I said, you went to a village and healed a whole village. And they were not even Christians. And I thought, and here I am, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, five baptized, got Jesus on my side, running over my life. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. And you, you healed an entire village? He hadn't died yet, so they weren't Christians yet. I said, oh, no. Oh, no. I became fully persuaded. It's, there ain't nowhere in the world I'm going to let them receive something that's mine. I took communion over that thing, and I'm like, all right, God, you my God now. Show me what to do. Show me where to go. Show me how to handle what. Show me how to do this. i never forget it. I went to a who's a, a friend of mine today. He is the best in his field, and he'll tell you that. And um, he, I went out to Tennessee and, and got in his MRI tank, and we went over everything. He's really good. He's got this big theater and everything. And uh, he called me up. He said, as soon as Doc get out that, that, that other thing, rush him over here. I want him to see something. <laughs> and I walked in there, man, and all these screens around there, and I'm looking around. I'm like, what are you doing? He says, well, I, I apologize for keeping you in there so long. He said, but I'm the best in the business, and, and, and I've seen this high grade before, and I done went in, and I done went out. He, you see, he said, you know that stuff I gave you guy? And that stuff I told him to give you, you drank it? And he said, yeah, yeah. He said, well, that, that was amplified even more. And he says, I done done this before. Now, the grade they said you had, he said, I don't see it. He said, now, now, he said, now hold on a minute. And then he hit the pause button. And when he hit the pause button on all the screens, there was a, the, 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 the images formed into a bearded man. And, and I looked at it, and my, my son was with me, and he looked at it, he did this, he said, I, and then Doc said, oh, the guy on the screen? Yeah, he said, that's something in it. I'm like, and I thought about what God told me. He said, didn't I tell you that I got your back? Now, you can say what you want to say, but I think that image was just to remind me that the supernatural was working. And went in and out, and he says, I don't know what's going on. He said, but what they say happened to you, I can't see it. And he kept reminding me, and I'm the best in the whole world. <laughs> and he said, you need to take it back and tell them to do it again. You know what they said when they took it back and do it again? They said, we ain't wrong. That is, it is what we say it is. I said, oh, I see what's happening now. The devil trying to get me to consider that instead of considering this. Whose report will you believe? I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. I'm going to believe that God's got my back. I'm going to believe that by his stripes I'm healed. I'm going to hope against hope. I trust him. I depend on him. I want you to do the same thing. Now, right now, I really hadn't started the sermon. That scripture wasn't in my notes. I don't know where all that came from, but <laughs> hey, glory be to God. Are y'all ready to live the supernatural life? Now, now I, I want to I want to show you something. Now, go to Second Corinthians chapter four and verse eighteen. Now, I, now. Stay with me now. They stand bush like I. Now, we human, physically, in a physical body, we abide and live and exist in the physical realm. Everything in this realm is physical. We have a physical body so we can comprehend physical things. But at the same time that this 
physical realm is running. At the same time, concurrently, at the same time that the physical world is running, there is a spiritual world that is in operation at the exact same time. I taught a sermon, what, Ken, 40 years ago, is the physical world really real? Now, I want you to think about something now. You have to be careful not to think that the only things that are real are the things that you can see. Right now, you are not the only beings in the presence in this dome. Physically, we can see you. But if God were to open your eyes up, you would be able to see all of our angels in here as well. At the same time. And it becomes hard for people to comprehend and to believe what they can't see. Mm. But just because you can't see something doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. And, and, and the problem is, is we've been deceived by, by, by thinking that, that this realm is, is the only real thing. And, and you've got to understand that this is not... The physical world is not the parent over the spiritual world. In other words, the physical world did not produce the spiritual world. The spiritual world is the parent over the physical world. In other words, every pattern in this physical world came from a spiritual world. I, 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 thought, I thought the other day, the Bible, here, people don't read He says, whatever you bind on earth literally says is what is already bound in heaven. So what he is saying is we should be the reflection of what already is in the spiritual world. Your physical body is the reflection of your spirit man. You think that you're going to be less real when you shed your physical body. But when you get out of the physical world, you're going to enter into the spiritual world, which is more real to the physical world and the fierce spiritual world that gave birth to this physical world. So your body is a reflection of what you gonna be like in the, in the spiritual world. You'll have a spirit suit in the spiritual realm, surrounded by spiritual matter, just like you have a physical suit in the physical realm, surrounded by physical matter. That's why I ain't nobody, I ain't scared to die. Because I'm just moving from one realm to the original realm that's responsible for all other realms. Glory be to God. Yeah. Let's, let's read this. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 4, 18. Read it out loud with me. Ready? Read. For we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are... All right, now let's milk this scripture. Keep it up there for a moment. While we look not at the things which are seen, literally here, this word seen is not specifically talking about seen with your eyes. He is saying, while we look not at the things that we can comprehend with our sensory mechanisms, all of the things you can pick up with your sensory mechanism, the thing you can see, you touch, you can, you can smell, uh, all, all that your senses can perceive, 
We're not looking at what your senses, we're not going to be looking at what your senses can perceive only. Of course, God gave you senses to be used in this physical, natural world, mostly to protect you, let you know when that's hot. Let you know, train come and move. <laughs> I had a dog got hit by a train. I'm like, why didn't you move? All that money I paid for you to be trained and you just sat there. <laughs> we're, not, we're not looking at the things we're seeing. Now, th what, this is what we're doing in, 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 amongst Christians. That's exactly what we're doing. We are focused in on all the stuff we can see. He says, don't look at that. But we look at the things which are not seen. Well, how can you look at what can't be looked at? What is he saying? For we are not, but we, but, 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 but we look at the things which are not seen or the things that can't be picked up with our sensory mechanisms. Why? He says, now, if you choose to live your life by your senses, and if you choose to allow your senses to govern your life, he says, you're going to be limited from the things that I can do supernaturally. For the things which are seen or can be picked up with your sensory mechanisms are going to be temporary. They're going to be temporary. See, what you don't understand is that if something hits your body and it's a disease, he says, it'll be temporary if you're not allowing it to govern you. You look at your financial situation as bad, it'll only be temporary if you don't allow yourself to be governed by it. You look at every crazy thing that can happen in this realm, it will only be temporary you know, that is, that's the truth, Lord. The Lord just spoke to me. He says, well, whether you decide to be governed by it or not, all this stuff is temporary. He's, everything you can see and pick up right now is temporary. You'll go in neighborhoods. I went in the neighborhood I grew up at, and you know, it's not even there no more. It was temporary. It was temporary. The things you can see are temporary. But now watch this. Put it back up. He says, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Now, 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 now listen to me carefully. This spirit realm is the eternal realm. This physical realm is temporary. And God is saying that you and I can begin eternity while we're in the physical world if we start paying attention to the things that we have access to in this spiritual world. Sickness is temporary. Healing is eternal. Poverty is temporary. Prosperity is eternal. <laughs> Worry is temporary. Peace is eternal. I'm going to switch. I'm going to start living by those eternal, those eternal things. And I'm going to start checking out those eternal things. I'm not moved by what I see. I'm not moved by what I hear. I'm not moved by what I feel. I'm moved by the eternal Word of God. Does everybody see this? Yes. If we don't teach this, if you don't hear this, if you don't start spending time thinking about this, you won't know how people operate in the supernatural realm while they're still in their physical body because you've never thought about that before. Please let me make sure you understand something. You will die one day. When you die, you're going to step up out of your body. The strange thing about it is that you it's going to be very hard to tell whether you're in the body or out of the body because you stepped out of a reflection into the reality. You just want to make sure when you step out, you, are, you have arrived at the right address.
Somebody said, where we at? Well, the sign says 666 hell. <laughs> you better make your reservations right now to 777 Heaven Boulevard. <laughs> the issue is not death. That's not the problem. You just got to make sure you got the right address. See, that's why the, de the, de the demons are busy right now. There's so much demonic influence. The demonic influence is all about kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. The devil trying to just get people out of the way. Kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. Those demons come and they influence you. They speak to you. They're telling you to do stupid stuff. It starts off with you're so depressed or you switch to something that gave those demons authority to be in your life. You know, you're doing some kind of weird religion thing, you know. You're, you're, you're messing around with vibrations and all that other kind of stuff. You're, you're, you're substituting the only God that exists with other stuff. And you're listening to doctrines of demons. And so you're giving place for those demons to come. And they're abiding in your life, but you don't know it right now. And then all of a sudden, you, when you start, you'll get strong depression. You'll get this strong loneliness. You'll get this strong will to give up. And, 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 and it's all leading to, to those in, demonic influence saying, kill yourself, kill yourself, kill yourself. Now, they operate in the spirit realm too. You know, man is a threat to the devil because, you know, men took uh, authority over angels, you understand, and over demons. What is man that thou art mindful of them who visiteth him and you do such things? I, I, even angels are submitted to men. Do you know that you're going to judge the angels one day? You understand how powerful you are and the authority that God gave you, but you don't see how the demonic forces are working against you. And then all of a sudden, you know, uh, you, you decide, you heard something say, kill yourself. And if, if you don't do it, you know, the way you talk to your therapist, you say, well, something told me to kill myself. It wasn't no something. It was a demon that you somehow opened the door and let that demon force come on the inside. And either he's oppressing you or, 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 or possessing you, and, and we don't even know what's going on. You, 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 all you got to do is look in the eyes of people, you know, when they go and they're shooting everybody, and, and they just don't know what's going on. You can see that these people are under influence. But the world won't ever go that way. They will never think about that because their solution is, oh, they need therapy. Oh, they need mental health. Listen, I worked there. I saw demon after demon. I cast some of them out. The boy was psychotic. He walking around all psychotic and everything. And I'm just like, is he going to walk around like that? And then you gave him drugs, which amplified it and gave those demons more of an opportunity to be there. And, and, and I felt sorry for the guy one day. I said, I said come here. Come on. Mm. Come on. I got that boy saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, and cast the devil out of him. In one week, he was discharged. They checked on him months later, he was doing fine. He was under a demonic influence. One guy came in one time, he was under demonic influence. He says, I'm Jesus Christ. I said, well, Jesus, we finna lock you up right now, because... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of creepy. Later at night, and you ain't got but a few staff on there, and then they come and admit somebody. He talking about he Jesus Christ and growling at the same time. Oh no, I come from College Park. I don't do all that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I ain't the investigative type. You understand what I'm saying? Lock Jesus up. Put Jesus in the BCR, and somebody else will see him tomorrow. <laughs> We'll leave a word for one of your disciples to come and visit you, Jesus. <laughs> Are you following what I'm saying? So here's this physical world that we live in. Here's this supernatural world that's responsible for giving birth to this physical world. The things you cannot see are more real than the things you can see. We're going to see lots of scriptures on this as we begin to, to, to deal with this. But these are the foundations for you to begin to understand. And they don't use you freaking out. There are angels and there are demons. But I don't believe in them. That's exactly what they want. For you not to believe in them and start acting like a fool and then somebody like me got to come and jump on you and cast the devil out of you. And in some cases, people say, I say, say, I say, let him out. No, I don't want him to get out. But hey, bro, that's you. But you got to get out of here. So either I'm going to cast the devil out of you or I'm casting you out. 
But one way, one way or another, you got to go. In the, what, 70s and 80s, that's, we, we had a lot. You saw that all the time. You saw that all the time. You come to church, there'd be people come up to you and say, I'm demon possessed, could you help me please? In two different voices. You would smell the stench of those things when you cast them out. I saw a guy who was directing a choir in the pulpit, and, and, I, and I'm like, this guy is under the demonic influence. I so wish I had this on, in, in recording. I ain't never seen no that before in my life. This dude was directing and, and flew backwards, and shoulders hit the floor and was pit to the floor first. I'm like, what just happened? <laughs> and we took him in the back. My pastor said, get him delivered. I went in the back. I said, Satan, in the name of Jesus, you come out. He said, no. I said, oh boy, that's how we gonna do this thing today, boy. That's how we gonna do this thing today. You, you're not allowed to say no. You have to respect the power of the name of Jesus. Man, we catch the devil out there, boy. He sent it back to my, what happened? I said, it looked like you got pent. It's like, you know, wrestling was big in those days. It looked like you got pent. One, two, three, you were out, brother. And that demon had to come out as well. I talk these things and some of y'all looking at me and over the stream, y'all thinking about, I don't believe. There are going to be some stuff that God going to let you see just to let you know that what I am saying is true. You better believe it. God knows how to make you believe. My wife was studying demonology in, 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 uh, in, uh, school and she, I, I, I don't know if I got the story right, you went to a club, is Taff over there? She went to a club or something and God opened her eyes. Now that's, that's Bible, he opened, you remember Elijah's servant? God opened his spiritual eyes and he saw angels of chariots and fire surrounding him. Well opened her eyes and she saw the demons on everybody's face in there. She called, has that ever happened to anybody else? She, she saw the demons in their face. And she called me like, poof, three, three in the morning, freaking out, yeah. telling me what she, what she had saw. And I'm like, well, yeah, you saw what was more real than those people. Somebody said, well, what's that called? It's called a spirit of discernment. Some of you don't believe, and some of you who don't believe are under demonic influence. I'll see you soon. I'll see you soon. She saw the supernatural side of what was going on. It's called a spirit of discernment. My mom, not many, very many people have that gift. My mom has a spiritual, spirit of discernment. A spirit of discernment is not, I know, I knew that was happening, but that's the spirit of nosiness. The spirit of discernment, <laughs> the spirit of discernment is opening your eyes to the spiritual realm and you being able to see into that spiritual world. And that is a gift that some people have that you can open, the God will open your eyes and you can see into that spiritual world. All right, we're talking about living in the supernatural now, so don't be, be freaking out and stuff like that. I'm just getting this part over with so you don't have to deal with it, but you, you're gonna have to deal with this because there, there are probably more people under demonic influence today as a result of the pandemic, as a result of the locking in. See, y'all might have, some of y'all might have locked in in a nice place. Some of these people didn't have a lot of nice places to lock into, and there's some weird stuff going on, and, and, and I have never dealt with so many people who want to kill themselves. Thank God they haven't, but a lot of people have. A lot of people have. They've whacked themselves. They're dead. And nobody even knew they were going to do it. But that little spirit just kept talking to them. Kill yourself. Kill yourself. I'm familiar with that voice. I heard that before. Early in my, in my life when I first got, got saved. Kill yourself. Kill yourself. And if you keep entertaining that thing and you don't know how to go to the Word of God and exalt that Word above that demonic influence, you'll find yourself doing something and won't even know why. Cussing folks out, don't even know why. Pulling guns on folks, don't even know why. 
Some told me to just shoot everything. What do you think's going on? Mental health issues. Yes, yeah, some of them. Some of them are demonic possession issues. We don't want to talk about that. But I'm going to be bold enough. I'm going to be the church to talk about all of the stuff that don't nobody believe in no more, that don't nobody talk about no more. Because we're getting ready to do some supernatural living. Romans chapter 8, verse 24. Romans chapter 8, verse 24. Now watch this. I'm so excited about your lives. You're getting ready to go to another level. Oh, the devil hates this because all I'm doing is exposing him. So if you run into it, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, there is power and authority invested in the name of Jesus. You remember in the book of Acts, the seven sons of Sceva? See, they didn't have a relationship with Jesus. They were professional exorcists. Y'all read this, right? It's in the Bible, right? And so they go up there, and, and, and uh, these guys, these people were possessed with demons, and they walk up in there as professional exorcists, and they say, okay, we cast you out in the name of Jesus that Paul preaches. Now, can you imagine? They walk in there, and the demon's like, we cast you out in the name of Jesus Paul preaches. <laughs> and the scripture says, they said, Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. But who are you? Let me say this. If you're born again and filled with the Holy Ghost, every demon knows who you are. And I believe the Bible says they jumped on them, stripped them of their clothes, and ran them out. This is serious stuff. This is stuff that people don't talk about no more. And then stuff just happens, and then the world gives it another name, and you ignore the bottom line issue. And you ignore this bottom line issue, just like you ignore the bottom line issue of this supernatural world, this spiritual world running at the same time that this physical world. And until you understand that, you won't know how to successfully operate in victory because all of these wonderful things that are in the spiritual world. Heaven has already been said. You know, there's another scripture to talk about how the tabernacle in Moses' day was taken from the pattern that was in heaven already. Amen. The pattern of the tabernacle was a, as the pattern of the heavenly tabernacle. There is a heaven. There is a hell. There are demons, there are angels, there is a God, and there is a Satan. And you and I will see the conclusion of this matter. But I ain't going out losing. The Bible says he's coming back for what kind of church? A victorious, glorious church. Now watch this, verse 24. For we are saved by hope. That's the truth. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for it? If I could see the thing, it wouldn't be hope. So our hope is based on what we can't see. And you know what kind of society we have now? A hopeless society. Because they're basing everything on what they can see. And we're basing things on what the Word of God has to say. Our hope is in Jesus. Our hope is in the Word of God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 7. Flip over there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and 7. Man, I am so looking forward to this, this time I spend with you now. Now, some of you are like, oh, I ain't going back there. All that demon talking got to me. See, now you got fear. And fear is the faith of the devil. The thing you fear the most will come upon you. Don't walk in fear. God hadn't given you no spirit of fear. So if God didn't give you a spirit of fear, guess where it's coming from? Stop it. Get out of fear. The Bible says here in verse 7, for we walk by what? Faith. And not by? Faith. 
our sensory mechanism. I'm walking by faith. I'm walking by what the Word says. I'm walking by the things that I cannot see. I'm walking by faith. I walk by faith. I don't walk by my sensory mechanism. I am, it, it is not so just because it exists in this physical world. It is not so just because I can feel it in my body. It is not so just because I can't see something in my bank account. I don't walk by that. I don't live by that. I live by God's Word. That's what it means to be a Christian. I am moved by His Word. I'm moved by His promises. I consider His promise. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Hebrews 11 and verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, which means you can't see it. It's the substance of things that you don't see right now. It's the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of faith can't be seen. It's, I hope for it, but I can't see it. I hope for it, but I might not be able to feel it. Faith is unseen substance. Somebody say, what's that? It's the Word of God. Faith, the Word of God. In fact, let me put it this. Now, the Word of God is the substance of things hoped for. And the Word of God is the evidence of the things that you can't see. So, w w what is it? What's going on? You're a Christian, but you don't get in the Word. You don't believe in the Word. It's not necessary. Oh, I come and get the Word so I can fulfill my quota as a Christian. No, 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 no. The Word of God is the substance of things hoped for. So my hope comes from the Word. We started off with that today. My hope comes from the Word. But the Word of God is also my evidence of things that I can't see yet. Why do I have the Word of God as my evidence of things I can't see yet? Because... When the devil shows up and tells me what's not, I say, no, you're wrong. Here's my evidence. I show him my evidence. By his stripes, I'm healed. That's the, that's the only thing I got right now. And I'm not going to let go of that word because that's all I got. I can't see it. I can't feel it. I can't touch it. But all I got is the word of God. And the word is my evidence. Glory be to God. Just like your title deed is the evidence that you actually own your car. I don't have to see your car. Just show me your, your title deed and I believe you got a car. Well, it's the same way. It's the same way. You know, I believe I'm healed. Where's your title deed? Isaiah 53. Glory to God. First Peter. I got evidence from God's word. I can't show you the manifestation of my healing right now. So until it shows up, I'm going to hold on to my confirmation of what I know. <laughs> the Word of God's my confirmation number. I don't have the room at the hotel, but I have a guarantee that that will manifest one day. Glory to God. And so when I show up at the hotel, in faith, literally, with a confirmation number, I'm assuming they got my room. I showed up one day at a convention, and uh, gave my name. They said, we don't have a room for you. I didn't panic. I didn't worry. I knew somewhere in this hotel there was a manifestation of my room. Now, I don't know if they got to go build it right quick or what, but there's a manifestation of my room. Why? How can I be that assured? Because I have a confirmation. Same way it's true when you're standing on God's Word, believing for something that is not yet manifested. All you got to do is look through those 66 books of evidence and pull out some evidence for what God said. And when you can't show the physical manifestation, walk around with the evidence and let everybody know, I can assure you, glory to God, that I'm healed. I can assure you that I'm delivered. I can assure you that I'm protected. Faith is the evidence of the unseen provisions that have not yet manifested in my life. Glory be to God. You got time for, for a few, few about, about, can I got about three more, about three more. About three more. Okay, can, can I do about the three more? Yeah. All right, let me, uh, let me take a minute of Scripture. So put three minutes up there. I'm, I'm just telling you, my time up, and I, knew, I normally shut up when the zero's hit. But I, just three more. Three. One, two, three more. Three. 
You guys on stream, I, I can't hear y'all, so. <laughs> Three. All right, real quick. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. In the beginning, God created the what? The heaven, say unseen. And the what? Say seen. So question, where did all physical things come from? Where, where did all physical things come from? No, 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 no. According to this scripture, where did all physical things come from? God. God. Look at it again. I got, I got to make sure. I, yeah, I, I hear what you're saying, but according to the scripture, in the beginning, God created what? And he created what? All right. So all physical things were created, excuse me, by who? By God, who created all what? All things. Physical things and what? Spiritual things. Well, well, that means all physical things came from God, who is a spirit, right? John chapter 4, 24, you don't have to turn there, but John 4, 24 says, God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him, how? In spirit. We hadn't been worshiping him in spirit. We don't have no idea what that means. We're not worshiping him based on what has already been done and said in his word. All right? So, if God created all physical things and God is a spirit, then all physical things came from the spiritual realm because it came from God, right? All right, go to 2 Kings chapter 6. 2 Kings chapter 6. And uh, guys, just work with me. 2 Kings 6, verse 8, verse 12. And then I give you the next one after that. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. All right, so the king was giving instructions out, okay, of Syria. And then verse 12, and one of his servants said, None, my Lord, who, who in other words, somebody was telling the instructions he gave in private. He says, which one of y'all did it? He said, None, my Lord, O king, but Elijah, the prophet, that is in Israel, he telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speaketh in thy bedchamber. Elijah wasn't there, but God told him the words that was being spoke. Oh, my God. And God will tell you some words that are being spoken. All right. Look at verse 14 through 17. 14 through 17. Therefore sent he hither, the king of Syria, sent horses and chariots and a great host, and they came by night, and they compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, a host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots, and his servant said unto him. Now this is Elijah's servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And uh, he answered, fear not. He was getting ready to fear because of what he saw. Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now his servant like, what you talking about? Can't you see all these chariots and horses surrounding us? They were sent by the king of Syria to kill us. And you sit up here talking about there's more for us than against us. I don't understand. Look what Elijah did. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, Open his eyes. Well, his eyes were already open, or he would not have seen the army that was surrounding him. So he wasn't talking about opening his physical eyes. He was talking about opening those spiritual eyes, right? Open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. Now, the horses and chariots of fire were always there. He couldn't see it. He could only see what was in the natural. Glory to God. Just because he saw it, that's not when they became real. They were real even when he couldn't see it. There are unseen forces that are working for you and I. And you may not be able to see them, but I tell you right now in the name of Jesus, they are working on your behalf. They are protecting your household. They are making a way for you. The Lord God has sent his angels to watch over you. Let you dash your foot against the stone. Don't be moved by what you see. Don't be moved by what you hear. Be moved by the word of God. That is your evidence that God has your back. Yeah. 
Finally. Starting next week. How do we access supernatural resources to benefit us in this physical realm? You ready? Words. Words are spiritual containers. They're the most powerful thing in the universe. Words penetrate the spirit realm and can be filled with the provisions in the spirit realm and they can come right back and deposit the resources in this physical world. We'll pick up with this, but Isaiah 55, 11 says, my words shall not come back void or empty, but they will perform everything it was sent. Watch your mouth. Make sure your containers are filled with the right stuff when it comes back. My word shall not return void or empty, but it will accomplish what it was sent out to accomplish. And when you send your words from God's word out and they penetrate this, this supernatural realm, they come back with a deposit. And the Bible says like rain that waters the flowers, one day it will begin to bloom and grow up from supernatural means. Amen. Amen. Now, I can't make you want to live supernatural. Some of you may be satisfied with just being average Christians, but I, I can't do that no more. I am so hungry to show this world who thinks that they're smarter than God supernatural encounters. They need to see. All throughout the Bibles, when they saw miracles, they were changed. When they saw the supernatural, they were changed. They need to see something supernatural. Not just compare, well, I like that preacher because he said that. I like that preacher because he preached like that. I like that preacher because da, 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 da. <laughs> Time for some supernatural happenings. Amen. We welcome that at World Changes. Amen. Prepare yourself. The age of the supernatural has begun. Right. Amen. Lift your hands up and, and just worship God for what you have, what you didn't understand. Ask the Holy Ghost. He'll help you. Father, we, we come before you with great confidence and great excitement and great boldness. We, we say, Lord, teach us. We say, Lord, take us. We say, Lord, show us. We say, Lord, we consider you. We consider your word. We consider your way. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my kesheh in the boshata. Let us depend on you in everything. Let us depend and trust you in everything. I declare your word, arise and shine, for the light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. And gross darkness shall cover the people, but it shall not come near us. May this word find its place in the hearts of those who heard it. And may they never be the same again. Take us on this journey. Walk us through it. We give you praise for it now. In the mighty, wonderful name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody said, amen. Give the Lord a big hand clap of praise. He's worthy. So our worship, I, I, I'm, I've been praying about how to articulate what I, what I want to say. I don't, I don't know how to say it except the fact that Christianity and, a, and being a giver go hand in hand. It, it's, uh, it's like, yeah, it's, it's Christianity and a giver goes hand. It's not Christianity and uh, a giver is somewhere else. It's like attached to who you are in Christ Jesus. It's like God, for, for God so loved the world, his love had to produce a gift. He, he loved the world that he gave 
his only begotten son. And we talk about how much we love God. We talk about how much we appreciate God and all that. So you follow what I'm saying? It's, 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 it's one and the same. They, they work together. You are a giver. You are a Christian. You're not just a Christian. You're, you're a giver. You are a Christian. It, 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 is, it is our worship. It is our worship. It is us saying to God, we are grateful for what you have done. We are grateful for the victory we had and have. We are grateful for the blessings we had and have. We're not givers to try to get you to do something for us, but we're so grateful for what you do. This is our time of worshiping. We are grateful that when we do give, you multiply the seed that we give. We are grateful for that, but our motivation for giving is not out of necessity. It is out of thanksgiving and worship and gratitude and appreciation and honor for what you have done. As you prepare your gifts, as you prepare to give to God, that is your, that's, that's you as a Christian worshiping God giving him glory. The Bible refers to that glory. Or thanksgiving. So that, that gift is like a thanksgiving for what he's already done. Give glory unto the Lord. Bring an offering and worship him. He calls that worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Praise the Lord. So at this time, if you are here in the dome and if you like an offering envelope, you can go ahead and get lift your hands up. The ushers will, will get one to you. If you're online and if you're streaming in today, then you can give through the text. You can uh, text World Changes Space and then the amount to 74483. Or if you're streaming in, you want to call the number on your screen, 1-866-477-7683. You can mail to 2500 Burdett Road, College Park, Georgia. Or if you're in front of your computer and you want to just log on, you can go to worldchangers.org or creflodollarministries.org and you can uh, give online, you can use your PayPal online, so forth and so on. Now, if you're here or at home and you'd like to access the QR code here in the dome, the QR code for giving is on the screen. You can also access the QR code in the lobby as well. And so that QR code, when you access it, it will take you directly to the text to give where you only have to load your amount and hit sin, and it'll do what needs to be done there. Uh, it is an honor and a privilege uh, for me to be so excited about seeing your life go to another level. We are really going to whoop some devil tail like never before. And uh, you're gonna have some great testimonies, so I'm gonna have to get the testimony box ready again because I wanna hear what's happening. And uh, some of you are gonna, experience some extraordinary things this week as God will open some doors because we're trusting him. We're living our lives and depending on him to do what needs to be done. And so that's a, that's a big blessing of the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. So Father, we thank you for the opportunity to give as givers, to bring this gift before you, to worship you in the beauty of your holiness. We're grateful for everything you have done, that you are doing, and that you will do. And we sow this seed in honor. We sow it in appreciation and gratitude and in thanksgiving. And we thank you so much for being our God and our Lord and our Savior. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Ushers, you can go ahead and receive the offering now. Uh, you can go ahead and hit your button, click whatever you're going to click, and do all those technical things that you do. Um, Man, y'all, y'all forgive me for screaming and holler, but I, I really, I just had, I just had a ball today, man. I, you know, I'm so happy about what we're learning. Now I'm gonna pray the prayer of salvation as soon as we take this up, and also E Church. If you want to become an E Church member, you can go to your web. Uh, you can go to WorldChanges.org and click join at the top of the page, or if you want to text that, you can text uh, JOIN WCCI, that's one word, to 51555. We'll send you all the benefits of e-membership. It's a simple way to become a part of World Changes Nation as an e-member. And so we're so excited about our e-membership because it's growing by leaps and bounds. 
but we're also excited about uh, uh, people coming back live to church and we're excited about you guys being here and uh, we're providing a safe atmosphere for you to be here to do what needs to be done. And so if you believe God's calling you to become a member of this church and you're here in the dome, we'll allow you to do that in a moment. But those of you who are at home, those of you who are here, if you've never been born again and you'd like to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, just pray this simple prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I realize that I'm a sinner, but right now I repent of my sins. I accept the free gift of forgiveness. Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Savior and my Lord. So by faith I declare that I am saved. I receive it now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you're streaming in and you prayed that prayer with me, just text the keyword, I'm saved. That's one word to 51555. Provide your name and email address and we'll send you a free book as a gift to you today. Welcome to the family of God. Go to the comment section. Let people know I just got saved. World Changes Nation, rejoice with those people and uh, put your spiritual E arm around them and, and welcome them to the family of God. If you're here in the dome today and, and you just prayed that prayer, you just got born again, would you get your Bibles and personal belongings and would you come down front? Or if you're here today and you believe that God's calling you to uh, connect with us and become a member of World Changes Church International. If you'll come on down front, we want to minister to you and thank God for you. Praise the Lord. Man, it's good to be back at church and see an altar call, isn't it? So good. So good to be back at church. You know, if you'll make a decision to get in the Word twice a week at least, uh, somehow, some way, either live or on the stream, I know your life will be transformed but it's gonna be because you made a decision to get in that word. I'm so proud of the decisions you've made this morning. And I just believe that the best is yet to come in your life. And you hadn't seen anything yet. The God of the turnaround is about to visit your house. In other words, I don't know what it is that's taking place, but it's not over yet. So don't give up, it's not over yet. God's getting ready to do an extraordinary thing in your life if you believe him and if you trust him and if you let him, amen? He's gonna do a great thing in your life. At this time, if you'll uh, follow our ministers up in the prayer room, they're gonna take you and uh, get and give some information to you. And we, we are grateful for you. We thank God for what he's doing and it's gonna be an awesome thing in your life, amen? Well, let's stand, prepare for the final blessing. Thank you guys for showing up and coming today and. And uh, we thank God you're safe in Jesus' name. Lift your hands up. Father, I declare great success and great favor in the lives of these, your precious people. I declare that the favor of God is working on their behalf, that the grace of God is working on their behalf. I thank you that they are operating in supernatural increase right now. I thank you that they are protected and the angels of God watch over them lest they dash their foot against the stone. I pray for mighty restoration in their lives. And I thank you, oh God, that your love will be shown upon them, that they will abound, Lord, in provisions, and your provisions will continue to abound in their lives. Lord, I thank you and plead the blood of Jesus over them and over their family and over everything they touch. I thank you, Lord, that you're stirring up that anointing in them to function and operate like they've never seen before. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. I thank you, God, 
that all is well with these precious saints. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day today.